So here we are on the second part of this presentation, finishing up the slide about Alphabet Ready Grant Year 2. We had gotten to the Alphabet Ready support materials, and the final thing that we had listed for what, what was created during Alphabet Ready Year 2 is we created another set of storytelling kits, and those kits were housed at the Ash County Library um, for two of the story time providers to share and then the kits from year one were being housed at the Watauga County Library. So this next slide is going to show you the kind of material that we focused on in year two for our support material. So we really tried to focus on building up our early readers or that truly beginning reader collection. Here's an example of a typical beginning to read, you know, level one book. But when you open it up, this is what the text looks like. And that's not really the text that the majority of children finishing kindergarten and entering first grade are going to be able to read. So we were looking for something much lower level, more like the We Read Phonics books, so um, that children would have more success in practicing and using those decoding skills that they were picking up in kindergarten. And it turns out that those books are actually kind of hard to find um, on this low of a level. Other books that kind of would count in this category are the Elephant and Piggy books, and you know, Baby Monkey Private Eye was a great example of a book that would serve the purpose of an early or beginning reader, and maybe children wouldn't even truly be aware that it was a beginning reader. So the backpacks for year two, we tried to give a STEM and early reader emphasis for those backpacks. So as much as possible, we tried to at least include one. But in many cases, the entire backpack was filled with books that would be classified as early readers if we could find them on STEM categories. So um, we would also have other uh, story books that would not necessarily be an easy reader, but still go along with the uh, with one of the STEM concepts. And then we would try to include some sort of manipulative that would go along with the letter that that backpack was about. And we put in the year two backpacks in many in one series of them, we included uh, these Lakeshore magic boards and printing practice cards to again, uh, continued that highlight on alphabet recognition and this actually also incorporated fine motor skills with that particular manipulative. So alphabet ready story times in action looks something like this. We would begin the story time with the story time provider reminding the children that we had come from the public library and that extending an invitation to the children to visit us there and talking a little bit about what was the difference between a public library and their school library. And then the children would work together with clues that the story time provider gave to build the focus letter of the day, which you can see here was letter E. And as they created that puzzle, um, they were uh, working on phonemic awareness, working on alphabet recognition, actually using large motor skills and rhyme and song to all incorporate uh, different avenues to the brain to help with the alphabet recognition and the, you know, learning at least that short sound of letter E. Then also, because the schools in the, in the counties that we work in use the Letterland curriculum, the Letterland has a action that they do with each letter as they're learning the sound that that letter makes. So we always tried to incorporate the Letterland action so that there was a feeling of continuity between the story times we were providing and the phonics lessons the children were getting at school. After uh, the le focus letter has been presented, then we would read a book that had the focus letter in the title, and in the title of this book was Edward the Emu. So we got to talk about more than one sound that the letter E would make, and um, we would ask the children to find the letter E in the title of the book. After reading the book, we would always have some sort of extension activity. This was actually called the magic envelope. 
um, and then read another book. And if possible, we would try to make that book be a nonfiction book. We also chose lower, um, different books when we were working with four-year-olds that maybe moved a little quicker, maybe not necessarily. Maybe we just show them a nonfiction book as opposed to reading them the whole nonfiction. Then there'd be another um, extension activity, usually involving song or flannel board or large motor skills so that we were continuing to keep the um, excitement up for the topic. And then afterward, uh, after we'd finished the stories and the um, activities, we would finish with a whole alphabet activity. And then this is no longer the letter E story time, but we always tried to have something that was representative of the letter that we were talking about so that we could come around individually to each child and interact with each child about the sound again that we'd been focusing on. And then we would stamp the children's hands with a stamp of the uppercase and lowercase letter of the day so that we were hoping that would foster some uh, conversation with their care caregiver at the end of the day and that it would remind them of the letter that we had talked to them about. Um, after stamping their hands, we would give the children either uh, bookmarks like these that were specifically for the story time that they had just heard, and the bookmark would include literacy tips for the parents, a game for the children, an invitation for the families to come to story times on Saturdays, ideas of books they could look for while they were there. And then about mid-year, we changed the format to giving them a calendar of library events. And on the back of the calendar, we would focus on one public library resource that we wanted families to know about. This is a picture of all the children that came to just the Watauga County Library for the November-December field trips. And the same amount of children uh, came to the Ash County Public Library for their field trips as well. And then the spring field trips uh, were just a little bit different. Now they were familiar with the library, so we did uh, do a story time. And in this story time, what we liked about this picture is the children actually um, there were diverse characters in this picture book, and the children were coming up and pointing and saying, there's a child that looks like me. Um, after the story time, we did a type of a scavenger hunt where we wanted the children to actually have the experience of looking th throughout the youth services area and looking through the beginning readers or the easy reader section of the youth services area and looking at the picture books and looking through the audio books and looking at the nonfiction books. So we had flagged specific books that we wanted them to find and then after they found them they brought them back to the story time steps and they were looking through them until we went on to the next activity which was to use my library card and we taught each child how to check out their books using the self-checkout which was especially um rewarding to do with the children who have never been to the public library so that when or if they're family member brings them to the library, they would be able to show their family members how to check out uh, library books after they get a library card. After they had each checked out a book using the self-checkout, we took them outside so that they could see uh, where they would return the books if the library happened to be closed. And they th it was almost as if that book return was a magic door. You know, they put a book in there, close it. When they open it, the book was gone, and it was just like magic for them. But then we did tell them we were going to share with them a secret that most of the people in the county had never seen before, and we let them go around back to the inside of the building and um, see where the books were actually coming into the building. And then we ended the field trip with hugs or high fives as the children headed off to the school buses. And um, like I said before, the field trips really turned out to be an unexpected blessing, especially for the children who might not get to come back to the public library except for these kindergarten field trips. So the awesome alphabet activities that I told you about, um, we do the first Friday of every month, and I set up the meeting room with literacy stations from 9 to 1, and families can come in and interact with those stations um, for as little or a long amount of time as they are interested in. So we've got things like uh, the foam 
puzzles with alphabet letters and alphabet bean bags. We've got the Duplo Legos with prompts to show them how to make letters of the alphabet with the Duplo blocks. And there is, of course, a Play-Doh station with the alphabet cards. This is a set of alpha bots that the children are tr uh, transforming from a letter into a robot. We've got two sets of different kind of magnets that the children can use to create the letters in their name or um, letters of the alphabet. We were, with grant money, able to purchase this sensory table. <clears throat> and in the summertime, <coughs> excuse me, these boys are sifting through sand to find lucite letters of the alphabet and the rest of the year we set this table up as a light table and have other uh, ways for children to interact with the with letters of the alphabet with the light table and then we always have some sort of craft this was just beads on pipe cleaners that they could bend into the shape of letters of the alphabet this was an activity that children could do to actually build small three-letter words. And we had bowling with the letters. There was a lock and key um, manipulative they could use where they had to find the specific key with a letter on it to unlock a specific lock. Um, they could fish for uh, a fishing station, and each fish had a letter of the alphabet on there. Some more puzzles. A a mystery box where they'd reach in and pull out an item and then they would have to figure out which letter of the alphabet that item started with. And then I always tried to have some sort of outdoor scavenger hunt for them to do as well that where they would be looking for something that included the letters of the alphabet. So here they're looking for butterflies and they, in the wings of the butterfly there are two letters of the alphabet hidden in each of the butterfly wings. And then one of, uh, I would always ask for feedback about our awesome alphabet activities, and in this particular uh, s feedback form, I appreciated uh, that people were visitors to the library, they were actually tourists, and they said that they felt like the awesome alphabet activities was done one beautifully, I wouldn't change a thing, I would love to implement this in our hometown library. So we were happy to get such a good feedback about this program that we do once a month. So year three of the grant is going to see us expand into the last four elementary schools in Watauga County. So we will now have an effect. We'll now be delivering alphabet story times in all the elementary schools in Watauga County, as well as all the schools in Ashe County. And then in year three, we want to create uh, YouTube videos uh, that include how we're doing our story times, as well as how we created our backpacks, so that if there were other libraries that were interested in a similar project, they wouldn't have to start from scratch or reinvent the wheel, but we want to just share everything that we've learned uh, with anybody who might be interested. And then the final thing we're hoping to experiment with in year three is something called, oh, I did want to say we learned that um, YouTube videos can be monetized. So if we're able to figure out a way to monetize them and then divert that money to our friends of the library group, we thought that might in the future be a way that we could keep our alphabet ready program going because maybe we could generate enough income um, to pay for part-time story time providers to continue going into the schools. So that's a, a hope that we can create something that might enable us to continue our program after the grant is over. And then uh, finally we'd like to experiment with Plickers in year three of the grant. And Plickers is a classroom response app that teachers can use without having devices for each student. So you would give each student a card like this, and each uh, student's card is different, and they would, um, actually I'm going to finish explaining how the plickers would work, how we hope to make it work for our um, evaluation of our Alphabet Ready Story Times, and I will explain that in the third and final part of this presentation.